Alright, so today we're going to look at non-vascular plants. Here are some pictures of some non-vascular plants. I abbreviate them NVP because they're non-vascular plants. Here's some general stuff you should know about non-vascular plants. They're the earliest plants, and in addition to that, they don't have any way of getting the water through their body. Think about a tree. It gets the water out of the dirt. You think the top of the tree needs water? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How's it going to get it? It's, like it's got a system like veins. Non-vascular plants, no vein-like system. So the vascular plants, they ain't got that. So as a result, they're very, very small, right? Because if they were tall and they didn't have a system for getting the water from there, they wouldn't, they would die. They would die. So they're very small because they're lacking a system for getting the water, and they live in very, very wet environments, very moist environments. Here's a little cladogram showing how it works. Here's the uh, ancestral watery plants. Here are the origin of land plants somewhere down in here. And the three main groups that we're going to look at are the liverworts, the hornworts, and the mosses. Here's our non-vascular plants, collectively called the bryophytes. So if you hear somebody blah, 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 bryophyte, those are non-vascular plants. Technically, those are really just mosses, but it's, they used to be called mosses and their allies, and then they just said bryophytes and their allies, and they're like, forget it, let's just call them all bryophytes. There they are. Liverworts, hornworts, you can see they're pretty basal on the cladogram, which means what? These things have been evolving for a long time. It's a common misconception with the cladogram that basal means like more simple, less developed. These plants are small, but they have some pretty complex features still. It means they're more closely related to the common ancestor, means they evolved earlier. But this group branched off pretty early. These are the most like the original land plants on the planet. So it's kind of fun. It's like looking through a time machine. They're small. The gametophyte is the dominant generation. That's the main thing you need to know. When you're looking at a non-vascular plant, like a moss, you see some moss looks like a moss, you're looking at the gametophyte of the moss. You've got sperm swimming around in there. When you're walking through a field of moss barefoot, your feet are just all saturated with moss sperm. You're welcome. They have swimming sperm. You can, if you're lucky, you can see them swimming around. They're little flagella. The sporophyte, which is diploid again, grows out of the gametophyte, and it often grows out of the gametophyte as a parasite. Oh. So imagine if you're going to have a kid, you're like, oh, I'm going to have a kid. But imagine that if it grew out of your body just always as a parasite. It could never feed itself, could never get any nutrients except for the ones that you eat. They make spores at the top. Right, the sporophyte grows out of the top, so it gets as high as it possibly can. Those spores are often dispersed by wind. These spores are pretty small. Most people are not allergic to these spores, but you may or may not have a, a little bit of the sniffles going on. They have the alternation of generations. As always before, you should have a nice dividing line separating your sporophyte generation from your gametophyte generation. Since the gametophyte generation is the main generation, we should probably devote a little more space to it. And we'll start down here with our moss plant. So you have your moss plant, has this nice rhizoids doing its thing, and then here it is, you know, nice green, leafy moss plant. Yay, it's gametophyte generation. It's haploid. It does my favorite thing to do and yours, a little bit of mitosis. Rich produces some excellent swimming sperm. Yay and also uh, some ova. Now some of them will have male and female gametophytes and moss uh, doesn't matter. So we'll probably have another moss plant over here and it will do some mitosis as well. Just instead of producing sperm we'll produce the ova and the sperm here swims on over to the ova. Swimmy, 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 boop! And when they finally meet together they have a nice union creating our final Zygote, delicious, delicious zygote, which is, of course, diploid 2N, hence marking the sporophyte generation. So now we're in the sporophyte generation, and it's all happening on this moss plant right here. So here's our moss plant over here where the sperm had to swim to. Should have planned this out better. And growing out of it from the zygote, we have my friend and yours. The sporophyte. Up here on the top of the sporophyte, it does some sweet, sweet meiosis, producing some haploid spores, which marks the beginning of the gametophyte generation. Those spores will be dispersed by the wind until they land in a new location, 
maybe over here, where it could grow into another beautiful, healthy gametophyte. Let's get to the lab. There's three main types. There's mosses. They're the most successful. They're like everywhere, all the time. They're also our like main colonizer for primary succession. These are the first plants that come in there and start breaking stuff down to make the like hard rocks into actual soil. Yeah, the reason why the uh, moss is such a good colonizer is because that root is not a true root. It doesn't really drill into the ground. It spreads across the top of things. So instead of calling it a root, they call it a rhizoid or rhizoid. So when you're looking for it, identifying the rhizoid, that's the root-like structure at the bottom. Here's a picture of some moss. Guess what that part of the plant is? Awesome. Gametophytes. Yeah. Say it, gametophytes. Gametophyte. What's this thing growing out of it then? That'd be the sporophyte. Guess what's in this capsule up here? Spores. Yes, yeah, spores. Liverwort is the next one. The gametophyte generation looks like lobes of a liver. If you look at it under a dissecting scope, which you will, you'll see that it has a similar texture to liver. So if you've never seen liver, uh, pretty much that's liver if it were green. They've got little yeah. scaly things. There's no cuticle on these. We talked, you know, well, I talked in the video about how that waterproofing cuticle keeps them from losing water. These don't have that, which means how do they get water? Yeah, you know, right through the leaf right through the leaf. There's no cuticle, so there's no waterproofing, so it goes right through the leaf, which also means, where do they lose water? The right out of the leaf. So it's like right out of the leaf. So as a result, these are often outcompeted by moss, which you do have a Because the liverwort has to be covered in water. They grow best on rocks. You can still find some on like the banks of rivers, areas where it will be completely covered in water from time to time, because that's how they get the water. This is a really good example of what's likely super similar to a transitional species, something that could grow underwater-ish and grow on ground-ish as well, but very, very near to water. Here's a picture of a liverwort. Here's this nice gametophyte. It's very lobal, just like the lobes of liver. Your liver has three lobes and pretty much covers like this entire region. And those lobes, that lobate structure is very, very similar. See these star thingies coming out? Those are the sporophytes. Here's another example. Shows you the sporophyte a little better. There it is sticking up. So it sticks up. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's very rare to actually see them on the specimens that we get, but it grows up and it fills with spores and then it just fills to the point that it builds pressure and explodes and then, you know, they, and the wind carries them a very small amount of space. They pretty much just grow like next to each other. They don't go very far. And if they did, uh, they may be too far from water. Hornworts, these are the cool ones, and we never have any, so you don't get to see any except for here. The hornworts are kind of cool because uh, uh, they like look like stabby horns. In addition to that, they have cuticle, but they have gigantic stomata. So these gaping, wide open holes so water can come in, but a lot of water can also be lost. So not just for gas exchange. They look a lot like seaweed. And they're often mistaken for some kind of seaweed species because like the, uh, like the liverwort, they like to be submerged in water from time to time due to their gigantic open stoma. They're green all over the place and they look like this. See this blumpy blobs down here? Guess what that is? That's the gametophyte. The horn things, guess what those are? Sporophyte. See this brown tip at the top? Guess what that's full of? And true to form, they make the spores, they make the spores, they fill with spores, they pop, the spores are carried by the wind for propagation purposes. Questions, non-vascular plants.